It's here, it's finally here. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is here, and I'm super excited to be able to play it, but, ugh. If you're wondering, is there any improvements over accessibility in the game? Let's take a look at the settings and find out. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, and the video is not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. So yes, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is here, and in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the settings and compare them from the original trilogy to the new remastered Legendary uh, Edition. So, um, but I do have to give a few caveats at the very beginning. First of all, thank you to Bioware for sending over the code for me to be able to try out the Legendary Edition for you today. And second of all, this is not uh, my accessibility review of the game. I have yet to really dive into the gameplay as of this recording. Recording. Um, so it's literally just going to be comparing these settings uh, today. Um, the accessibility review for me will be coming in a future video, uh, so stay tuned for that. But before I show you the uh, the options menus from Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 and compare them to the Legendary Edition, uh, I do want to be able to uh, say uh, something first that um, if uh, in regards to uh, what accessibility is here from at least in these options. Um, if you just want to jump to the settings and see what's there, I'll leave a either a timestamp here on the screen or in the description down below. You can be able to click on the timestamp there to jump to that particular section. Um, but I do encourage you to be able to listen to this first because it does give uh, some context as to what you're going to see uh, when I compare the two uh, settings menus. First of all, if you're looking for any new uh, options uh, or any improved options for accessibility in the Legendary Edition as compared to the original trilogy of Mass Effect, unfortunately, you're gonna be disappointed. Um, but that is not necessarily a bad thing uh, in this case, and I'll, and I'll sort of explain it, because you have to understand sort of how remasters works when it comes to the development process. And if you're upset about the fact that there is no accessibility options here in the new Legendary Edition, and you're hoping that Mass Effect is gonna be extremely accessible to play, I'm sorry, I wish that that's the case, but again, you have to understand how development works when it comes to remasters. Because this is a remaster of the original trilogy, there is a very limited amount of time, uh, budget, and, and team members and resources that are given to a remaster of a game. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it like because this is a remaster, all that was kind of really done was just kind of added a little bit, like upgraded the graphics of the original trilogy, and then also improved a little bit of the gameplay to for more modern consoles. Uh, and that's kind of all that they were able to do. In some cases, if you wanna be able to add in some of the accessibility options that we've grown accustomed to over the past uh, two, three, four years, you would actually have to technically remake the game and build the game from scratch in order to be able to integrate those options fully and make them actually worth uh, using and, and trying out or uh, being able to add in as options in the game. Um, that's why, for instance, when you look at Final Fantasy VII as a remake, um, obviously there's gonna be more options that are gonna be added into the game because they're remaking it from an original sort of 16-bit game. So of course there's gonna be more modern options that are gonna be available uh, when it's upgraded to modern consoles. So because Mass Effect Legendary Edition is a remaster and not a remake, you have to sort of remember that there is not much that Bioware could have done to be able to add in more accessibility. I am sure, I'm 100% sure that developers probably wanted to be able to add in accessibility features into this, and I could probably be willing to bet money on it, uh, but unfortunately that just w that was not possible with what uh, was available to them to be able to try to, to integrate that into Legendary Edition. But that being said, this does not make the game completely inaccessible um, or that it is uh, gonna be worse than the original trilogy. You have to remember, as an example, when the first Mass Effect came out, the common complaint was that the controls were really clunky and it was hard to be able to play. 
but when Mass Effect 2 came out, the controls were vastly improved and a lot of people recommended that more than necessarily playing Mass Effect 1 because it was a much better experience and then they continued that uh, from Mass Effect 2 into Mass Effect 3. So from what I have read in the previews that I've seen for the Legendary Edition, they did go and tweak uh, the options or, or at least tweak the gameplay for Mass Effect 1 to be able to make it a more consistent experience when you go through all three games in the trilogy. So there is going to be an improvement on that, uh, but you also like you have to think and keep in mind that that doesn't necessarily uh, mean that it's going to be so great that the gameplay is going to be completely accessible. Um, it just means that they were able to tweak it a little bit to be able to make it uh, available and, and workable as a gameplay for modern uh, generation of consoles. This doesn't necessarily mean that the that uh, that options makes the game uh, for uh, makes a game accessible you have to really t look, look at the gameplay and see what the gameplay is like in order to be able to kind of figure out whether the game is fully accessible. Options alone does not make a game accessible. You have to also have a, a, an accessible gameplay experience, which goes into more of behind the scenes of how the game was developed. It's an overall experience uh, that makes the game accessible, not just what options are available in the settings. Sorry for the long rant. Let us jump into these settings and uh, and see what's there and, you know, see what kind of cool things we can be able to find from each of the settings. OK, so this is the new launcher to get into all three games in the Legendary Edition. And the only options you can actually adjust here is the subtitle font size, whether it's small, medium or large, or turn the controller vibration on or off. Everything else, language, gameplay, feedback and crash reporting uh, is the only options you can adjust before you jump into each game. So here is the original Mass Effect 1 as compared to Legendary Edition. Um, there is not that much difference uh, between the Legendary Edition menus for each of the three games. So I do want to be able to point that out. Um, so the differences are going to be what is in the original as compared to now the new one. Um, so as you, can, uh, as you can see, the volume sliders for the sound is pretty much the same. Uh, the gameplay is pretty much the same. Um, but the what I did notice here in the control settings uh, is that you can be able to adjust camera sensitivity in the new legendary edition but mass effect one was the only game in the in the original trilogy and in the new one that actually had a slider for uh horizontal and vertical uh sensitivity for both combat and exploration it's again i don't know why that that was never added in or continued on in mass effect two and three um or in the legendary edition but it was the only game that actually had that which i kind of thought was more of a modern setting but i guess in 2007 that was something that they added in uh but didn't continue forward uh the gameplay is pretty much the same. Um, the only difference is, is that the level scaling is now going to be consistent across all three games instead of individually, um, but you can be able to set it to classic mode, which will scale the leveling uh, for each game individually, um, and, and you can be able to set that within the game itself. So here's Mass Effect 2 original compared to Legendary. As you can see, there actually is a bit of a font decrease in the Legendary Edition. I kind of wish that the larger font in older games would come back. One thing I did notice though, actually, in the original Mass Effect 2, autosave is off by default. You actually have to manually turn it on, whereas in the Legendary Edition, it is on by default. I don't know why that was, but that was kind of weird, I noticed. Another thing actually I did notice in this, in Mass Effect 2, the original, is that you can be able to increase the brightness uh, by a factor of five in the graphics menu, um, whether you want to increase it or decrease it. But in the new Legendary Edition, uh, that is actually replaced uh, in the calibration menu. It's more for HDR, but then also um, you can actually be able to favor quality or favor resolution in the new Legendary Edition. So you can either play it in 4K or the highest graphics or at a consistent frame rate. So here's Mass Effect 3, the original compared to the Legendary. The main difference here is that actually the gameplay and narrative menus in the original is kind of combined into the one gameplay menu in the Legendary Edition. I also do want to point out uh, in this one, as well as the previous games in both versions, original and Legendary, the subtitles are off by default, so you do have to manually turn them on. The only difference is that, like I said, in the launcher, you can actually be able to increase the font size across all 
all subtitles across all three games. Also as well, I do want to be able to point out in the sound menu in the original, you actually had the ability to be able to adjust the dynamic range, um, which is something that is not available in the Legendary Edition. So that is all the settings and comparing them from the original trilogy to the new rem uh, Legendary Edition. Uh, I hope you were able to kind of gleam a little bit of uh, new info about it. Uh, and if you were curious as to what was available, I hope that uh, gave you some insight. Again, my accessibility review of the trilogy will be coming soon. Uh, I just, there's a lot of hours of gameplay I have to go through just to kind of uh, sort of give my general uh, overall thoughts uh, on the final version of the game. Um, so that, again, that'll be coming very soon. Um, but I just wanted to be able to at least get this video out there to compare the two um, just so that you can sort of get the information before the game uh, comes out. I know this is the day before the game comes out, but uh, I just wanted to be able to at least get this information out there as quickly as possible. Um, so that being said, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please be able to give it a thumbs up because the engagement helps uh, my uh, like video sort of uh get into other, more of the algorithm and the new like youtube feed and search and stuff like that um so if you if you like it uh, i would appreciate the thumbs up if you want to be able to see more of my videos you can hit the subscribe button that would be great as well uh and if you want to be notified as to when new videos come out make sure you hit the bell notification icon if you have any questions or if you want to know about specific things in the legendary edition uh, that I can actually go into and try out in the uh, when I do my review or jump in the gameplay uh, please leave a comment down below or hit me up on Twitter at Steve Saylor and I'll try to actually be able to include that into uh, my review uh, when I go into it um, that is it for now uh, thank you so much and uh, I will see you all in the next video. As always, I remain obediently yours. Bye. I, I should go. <laughs>